With a franchise that's been around for almost 25 years, stretching over six canon video games, four spin-off video games, five tabletop games, two comics, numerous strategy guides and cancelled projects, as well as two different publishers, it's easy for some things that aren't exactly confirmed in lore to be spread around the internet. Today, I'm going to go over five misconceptions surrounding the lore of Fallout. Misconception number one, vertebrates are a post-war. In truth, vertebrates are actually pre-war inventions by the US military. I think this misconception comes from the Fallout 2 side quest, Get the Vertebrate Plans for the Brotherhood of Steel. The quest giver Matt claims that the Enclave has developed vertebrate technology, and the Brotherhood of Steel needs something similar in order to stop the Enclave threat. But there are a few pieces of evidence that reveal that, while the Enclave may have developed their own vertebrate technology after the war, these flying military transports were around before the nukes went off. A Model XV B02 Vertebrate appears in the Museum of Technology with a placard that reads, This is a scaled model of a prototype military transport vehicle being developed by the US military. The XV B02 Vertebrate is a VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing, with an extremely durable armored fuselage that can be armed with a variety of offensive weapons and defensive countermeasures. This is the most advanced aircraft of its kind ever developed, and the military hopes to press them into service by 2085. And it does seem like a few, perhaps prototypes, made it into military service as in the opening sequence of Fallout 4, a vertebrate can be seen flying over Sanctuary Hills. And if that wasn't enough, on the rooftop of the Museum of Freedom is a crashed vertebrate with an audio log from the day of the Great War. Here it is for you. Personal log. United States Army Staff Sergeant Michael Daly. This past Saturday, October 23rd, while en route to West Stockbridge, a vertebrate crashed into the roof of this museum. Cause, EMP following nuclear detonation. Several, in fact. From the intel I've gathered, this was a global event. The co-pilot was killed on impact. The pilot died of his injuries a day later. The day after that, Flaherty and Kanawa were shot by some scared, desperate survivors. Then Przansky took off running. Haven't seen him since. Now, it's my turn to go AWOL, if... That concept even applies anymore. My armor's fusion core is burned out, so I guess my soldiering days are done. I'm heading to Boston, on foot, to see if my sister survived all this. She's got an apartment on Boylston Street. This is Mike Daly, signing out. Good luck. And God bless America. Or what's left of it. So yeah, vertebrates, them boys, they're pre-war. Misconception number two, vehicles don't work. A common misconception in the Fallout universe is that none of the vehicles you find about your travels in the wastes work. The reality is that there are vehicles that work well after the war. Prime example is the topic of the previous misconception, the vertebrates. But you don't want to hear about that. You don't want to hear about the Pridwin, the mobile base crawler, the Nuka Express, the Repcon rockets, the PMV Valdez, the B-29, the Long 15 trains, or the Highwayman. You want to hear about the vans or the APCs or cars. While of course some of those vehicles are not operational, either due to damage, lack of fuel or power source, some do work. Now, they never actually work in-game due to engine limitations, but there are tire tracks in Fallout 4 near some APCs, indicating that they were once working. And a note in Fallout 76 mentions that a Raider gang's truck had just recently broken down. So, working vehicles do exist in Fallout, and we do see them. Refer back to the long list. For an actual reason, it's just that the engine limitations restrict the player's ability to use them in-game. For a lore reason, a multitude of excuses could be made. No power, no fuel, poor road infrastructure, worn tires, rust, and so on. Besides, if you were cruising your way through the Capital Wasteland, you'd miss all the nooks and crannies that make Fallout great. Misconception number three, the point of divergence is X event. I've mentioned divergent events before in a previous video of mine, you should check it out if you haven't already. The idea is that in speculative fiction, a divergent event is used as a way to open a new timeline in an alternate universe to our own. It's a quick way to explain the setting of a piece of media. In Fallout, while many specific events could be offered as the sole divergent event, Fallout doesn't have a singular event where our timeline split. While it's true that Fallout takes place in a hyperbolic world to that of our own, no one is able to point to a specific event and say, that is where the timeline splits. Some people have tried though. The Fallout Bible, a non-canon source mind you, claims that the Fallout timeline diverged sometime after World War II. A popular claim is that the transistor not being invented in 1947 is the divergence point, 
However, we don't have to look that far to find examples of followed exclusive events happening before World War II. Sunset Sarsaparilla, an entirely fictional soft drink manufacturer, was founded in 1918, which is well before World War II last I checked. And if we want more examples, we look to the polarizing Fallout 3 DLC, Mothership Zeta. Toshiro Kago, one of the Zaytan abductees, was a samurai from the 1600s. As far as I know, Zaytans are a completely fictional alien species, once again pushing back whenever the divergent point would be. Or take the ancient city of Ubar, for example. While the Atlantis of the Sands is a real ancient city that was discovered in 1992, the notion that the city was home to an ancient alien civilization is exclusive to the Fallout universe. What I'm trying to get at is that there's no singular divergent event, rather the Fallout timeline follows this atypical winding path, jumping back and forth between our timeline and an alternate one. There is no singular event. Misconception number four, New York is a crater. This one even blew my mind. At some point, even I believed this to be true. The reality is there's nothing in any Fallout published media, including the non-canon stuff, that supports this claim. And believe me, I've looked. The Fallout Bible does mention an event happening in 2065 where due to enormous demands for electricity, a nuclear reactor in the city almost goes critical. The near meltdown brought into effect power rationing. This event was termed as Hot Summer, but it never mentions a crater. I think this came from the idea that because New York is a major metropolitan area, it would be a high value target for bombers. And so people theorized that New York was a crater? Then this rumor spread by word of mouth. It's such an unassuming sentence about a place with not much established lore surrounding it that you just can't blame people for simply accepting it. With that being said, everyone should have known better with the release of Fallout 4. One of the early location ideas for the game before the team decided on Boston was New York, indicating that it couldn't have been a crater if the developers wanted to make a game there. This is just one of those weird cases where we've all heard this claim, but we don't know where we heard it from. Misconception number 5. All NPCs, terminals, and notes are telling the truth. This is a big one, and is not only applicable to Fallout, but any storytelling media. When you write a story, and more specifically you write characters, you want them to be as realistic as possible. You want the player to feel immersed in the game. Real people have motivations, reasons they do what they do and say what they say, therefore your in-game characters should have motivations too. The best way I can describe this is using a polarizing character from a little 1998 computer game called Fallout 2. Myron is the character in question. Myron is a teenage pharmacologist in New Reno whose big claim to fame is being the creator of Jet. In reality, what basis does the chosen one, or even you, the player, have for believing him? He's a slimy predator who makes his money by getting people hooked on his makeshift form of methamphetamine. I've mentioned this before, but the chosen one can even call him out on it. I only use Myron as an example because I think it's one of the few cases where it's not outwardly obvious that an NPC is lying to you. Of course, there are other cases of NPCs lying, like Barton Thorne lying to you about his trapped girlfriend, only for him to betray you once you've cleared the geckos in the area, or Jacqueline and Nipton, who after killing Thomas, will feign friendliness only for her to turn her gun on you too when you're not looking. Just because an NPC terminal or note tells you one thing does not mean that it's 100% true. The information given from these things can be rooted in bias. A Legion soldier saying the Legion is great and is a utopia is a biased statement, for example. Now, this isn't some conspiratorial rant about how the Fallout world is out to deceive you. It's just a reminder that all the information presented to you will have some form of bias, and NPCs aren't always reliable storytellers. They provide perspective, not from the developer's point of view, but from their own point of view as people living in the world. The Powder Gangers speak ill of the NCR because they lock them up for crimes. Does that make the NCR objectively bad? No. Just from the Powder Ganger point of view, they would be. The Brotherhood back west writes of Arthur Maxon as though he is a god. Is he a good person worthy of worship? No, not really. What I'm trying to get at is that you should be critical of what you read, hear, and see in the games, as much of the information presented to you is done with some amount of bias. Anyway, I'm sure I could go on, but I wanted to take a break from the longer videos as we just had back-to-back 25-minute -back uploads with the Fallout Iceberg. So I figured a quick video about something that's been on my mind was the way to go. I've been working on a ton of video ideas lately, I think I have like 5 or 6 scripts in progress right now. Comment if there is something you found interesting, maybe we can have a little civil discussion in the comment section. If you have any other suggestions, leave a comment, I love researching Fallout stuff. And lastly, remember to like and subscribe. Take care folks. Sims is an idiot. He prides himself on his position as mayor and sheriff of this scrapyard.